Y'all, okay, I am currently at the animal clinic for the veterinarian for my cat. I have my cat, she's getting spayed. But you guys, I'm sitting here and I'm reviewing the video that I am that I did that should be up now um, and gone up on September 13th, Friday the 13th. And I'm watching it and I look in my, um, my rear view mirror here, my side mirror, and I see a man walk by and he's walking like as if he's walking across behind me and he's wearing a cowboy hat. He's wearing black, not black, blue jeans with a cow with cowboy shoes you guys and I look behind me I'm looking I'm getting out I open the door I see nobody nobody I am I'm I'm happy about this you guys because there's a handful of times that I've seen angels in the flesh angels that look like you and me walking and in my presence and I knew they were angels right away. But the fact that I am sitting here editing a video that I believe is going to be very um, beneficial and helpful and a blessing to many, I literally just saw an angel like walk past me and I see him from the back, almost kind of see a side profile. He was fair skinned, but wow. Y'all, I'm telling you, I can name every single time that I saw an angel. Um, an angel helped me change my tire before. Um, there was an angel on the road with me and my family as we were traveling at eight years old um, and almost got hit. And a big Hummer, like almost Hummer-like um, truck came and sta stood by us until we got back on going on the road somehow. Um, an angel with me and my ex-husband when we almost spun out on the street and I was helping drive his car to, you know, and the brakes wasn't working. Um, I had an angel at an event, a Christian event that I went with my friends. Um, I, we entertained her and when I told my friends that she was an angel, they looked at me like I was crazy. And just now, but I also used to see angels a lot when I was younger at eight years old. That's just a spiritual gift that I have. Praise be to God, I'm a seer. And so, and a hearer. But you guys, I was looking around, I'm like, what? So all in all, I believe that was just a beautiful sign and a beautiful confirmation that yes, I need to get this video done and you know, my angels are surrounding me. But the other thing is, I wanted to share what happened last night because I believe um, the Lord pricked it in my heart and said, I want you to share that testimony and a praise report that goes along the side of obedience. My video has gone viral when I said, I finally did what God told me to do. So that video is currently up it's been up for about four days. It's already past 2,000 views and it's keep going up. But a lot of people are commenting on it because they're saying it's a blessing um, um, that my story, my testimony of finally moving forward, you know, in faith and doing what God asked me to do originally um, is, you know, is has been done and it, it's inspiring for them. And so at the end of the day, I want to share just how much further obedience is and how God blesses our obedience. A long while ago, I want to say um, sometime during my first marriage, so about 10 years ago, the Lord um, began to tell me because, yeah, 10 years ago, because in 2014 was when um, one of the biggest obedience steps and the first time I fasted for a week really changed the course of my life. I, I um, let go of something that I had been wanting to do my whole life and God told me to lay it down and to not do it. And lo and behold, by me not going that route, which was getting my PhD, going into the military as a clinical psychologist and serving that way, um, the Lord literally brought my heart desires back to me to be able to provide therapeutic services in the military, but without having had racked up an extra $100,000 for a PhD. <laughs> I can do the same things that I would have been able to do as a clinical psychologist that I can now do as a licensed marriage and family therapist. So God is good. So that's in a snapshot, 10 years ago, making the decision to not go to grad school, even though I had worked up to that point, the last 10 years to get to that point. At 16, 17, I knew I wanted to do that. I knew I wanted to serve in the military and be a part of that community and so forth. And it took me 10 years to get there. And when I finally got accepted to my dream school as a clinical psychologist, um, the Lord said, no, that's not what I want you to do. Lay it down. And he gave me a business to keep me company and to, you know, kind of 
give me new renewed hope and stuff. But um, after a while and after the demise of my marriage, I did begin to feel like a regretful, like, well, Lord, was that the right decision? But since he has shown me just how right it has been because he ushered me into a position, um, you know, as a licensed marriage and family therapist to still provide therapeutic services to the whole military population. So look at God. And it allows me to travel and it allows me to go any place I want um, whenever there's a position available and so forth. So God is good. That was just 10 years of obedience being fulfilled for me. Now he's transferring me to a different state um, as I embark on the second year with this particular company and so forth. So God is good. But with that being said, you guys, I just want to share very quickly um this praise report based off of my obedience um based off of some of the comments that you guys have done i've tried to respond and so forth and i'm not gonna lie the devil has been attacking me a lot um as he always does but um every time i post a video for you guys and i share my testimony i miss out on um hours of sleep i have to stay up praying and speaking in tongues reading my word just to combat the warfare that comes up against me and i'll begin to hear satan whisper certain things and satan make me doubt or lead me to begin to question am i in the right path am, am i doing the right thing so with that being said i want to recap and quickly share that when i um, finally did what the Lord asked me to do and applied to a job, which is a whole new, um, with this, with a whole new company, same job as a military counselor, but different company, which would be their sister company of the company I'm currently working with, um, in a different state. I was, you know, open to it. I was waiting, but how the time frames measured up from, I only had five days to accept the offer that, um, I received as an internal transfer with my current position. But the other um, job said, oh, we're not gonna be able to interview you for a position until Tuesday, which would have been the last day for me to accept. Well, the day I accepted the offer um, for the internal transfer, the Lord said, I want you to accept the offer. He led me to accept the offer because uh, it, it confirmed that what I talked about in that video that he just wanted me to be obedient. He just wanted to see that I was willing to do what he asked me to do. And if it caused me to give it all up, he still wanted me to move in that direction and prepare my heart to sacrifice and to let it go in, in, in an effort to do what he's called me to do. So when I applied, that was seemingly enough for the Lord. Like he, he gave me peace enough to then accept my offer the next day without even going on with the interview. Although I did let the recruiter know of the other um, company that I did have a job offer on the table and that um, I wanted to see what they were willing to offer. She couldn't really give me specifics like what position I would actually fall into, whether it was going to be with the kids or it was going to be with adults and so forth. So when I accepted the offer, I started to receive confirmation that God was okay and I had peace like okay God just wanted me to apply and to do that part but he has since given me understanding and wisdom about the fact that he wants to bless me in other ways and in order to do that I have to have a consistent employment history with the same company preferably and so forth but even though the other position would have put me directly in proximity to the main campus of the Bible college that God has called me to go to. Um, I also felt that tug like, well, Lord, um, even though I get to stay with the same company and go to a satellite campus, is it better to go to the state and work at a new company as long as I get to go in person to the Bible college? So these are the questions that I have behind the scenes. And it it seemed to me and has since been confirmed to me that God said, it is okay, Charmel, my grace is sufficient for you. Move forward with the internal transfer in a different state, start Bible college online, and then go to the satellite campus um, for the second year. So that's why I accepted the offer. But in the last few days, the Lord began to, um, not the Lord, the enemy began to really um, try to fight me on that and make me feel like I wasn't, I was still doing it my own way, which is what God said I initially was tr doing without, you know, with deferring and not putting in the application with a new job and, um, or new company. And so I said, I started to talk to God. And I said, Lord, is this true? Like, am I, 
doing it my own way. I want to be the best example and I want to do your best will. And he was like, no, Charmel. He was like, I want you to do something different. He said, I, you must go to this state because there's people I want you to meet and things that I have waiting for you. That is from me. And I said, okay, then why is it? He said, because it's warfare. He said, the devil doesn't want you to have peace in this. And I said, okay. And as a, almost like a recompense and a divine, you know, vengeance, on my behalf, God in the last few days has caused so many people to bless me in insurmountable, unfathomable ways. And one of the ways is that one of the people that I know, um, they know that I'm moving and they are um, someone that, you know, I met or whatnot on this today show. I'm not going to give too much details because, you know, people, you know, hate and talk or whatever, but I'm going to just say a particular person got wind that I was moving, had recognized that I had been stressed and contacted me and said, Hey, I have noticed that you have been stressed lately. Um, and I would like to bless you monetarily if you would take it. And I'm thinking like, what? Because that message came right after you guys because of this move and because of, I, I still have massive bills to pay. I literally only had about $900 left and I still need to drive 20 hours to my next state and then the next place I'm going to be living. And I'm thinking like, oh my gosh, but I currently, you guys, I know, drum roll please, I currently have 11 cats under my care. Yes. Two of my cats begin to procreate and then it got crazy after that. Okay. So I ended up with 11 cats and just a week ago as i was sharing you know things that i'm getting prepared to move um with and and what that's looking like one of the um women that i work with offered because she lives on a farm and is moving to a bigger farm offered to take six cats off of my hands and help rehome them and get them adopted for me all she asks is that they're updated on their shots and that the female in the six that i'm going to give her to help rehome i'm going to keep five of them um is spayed so i'm like okay great but you guys that costs money so yesterday here i am one of the ladies is going in right now but I came to the vet that I've been um, having my animal serviced at and the whole, all the process, getting them all their shots, seven of them, their shots, and then the one spade um, is coming up to about $750. That's only going to leave me, I'm, I'm sorry, I would say about $700. That's only going to leave me about, what, $200 you guys to travel. And I, but God said, Charmel, you need to do that. Yesterday, he said, you need to do that. So I was obedient and diligent with leaving work and coming straight here to get the cats, their updated vaccines and um, the spade for the female cat. And it was within hours that I get this message from this other person offering to help me out. I kept going back and forth and saying, no, no, I can't. You don't have to. I'm okay. And then finally he, he sent me a message. He sent me a picture of Amazon. He said, we could do this the hard way or the easy way. And he sent me a picture of a safe, like a money safe. He said, I could, I will attach this to your car. He was like, so you can either give me the information. I said, but how much are you trying to give me like a safe? He said, you send me your information. You'll find out you guys. I said, fine, here. And I sent him my email for my Zelle. And I was g talking to God, going about maybe, you know, 45 minutes. I finally look at my phone, kind of almost forgot about it. I looked at my phone and I see the message saying, um, so and so had deposited $500 <laughs> to your account. You guys, when I say God's goodness, is so wonderful and beautiful. He will send people to bless your socks off. He will send people, whether they're good people or not, whether they're in the faith or not. The Bible does say he, the wealth of the sinners will be laid up for the righteous. And he also says, my rain will fall on the just and the unjust. He can bless other people just so that they could bless you later. He could bless you just so you could bless other people later. So at the end of the day, I was blessed by this person's kind gesture and generosity and it was like 
as if I didn't spend the money that I needed to for the the animals to get spayed and vaccinated. And so I'm just like, wow. So I nef definitely have enough money to travel and to get things together, to eat on the road and things like that. I was concerned about that, but I had, I remember telling God yesterday, I said, Lord, I've done it before where I relinquished all worry and fear concerning money. I'm going to do it again. And that's what I just came here in peace. I transferred the money from my savings account to my checking account to pay for the cat stuff. Today it's $201 for the spay. And so I was only gonna be left with $300, which was just gonna be enough to travel for all my gas. And so I just trusted God. And then this person, this man blessed me with $500 on his own accord. And then on top of that, another friend of mine said, you know, um, I wanna make sure that you get some rest while you're driving on the road. So him and his wife are going to gift me with a hotel room. What? So they're literally have planned to put me up in a hotel room after I drive my first 10 hours. You guys, I, I just can't make this stuff up. This is God. This is what obedience does. And this is my confirmation. Last night, the Lord spoke to my heart. He said, Charmil, you are going to go to that state. I just didn't want you to start there. You need to pass through this state with the current job that you have because there's people I want you to bless. There's people there that I want you to meet. There's people that I want to have bless you. And so he's really just confirming by giving me these blessings and then continual peace. I literally have peace that surpasses all understanding. Do I like the fact that I have to move and leave everything behind? I'm literally been instructed to only take all of my clothes and my shoes and my pets. That's it. I'm literally leaving the rest of the furniture in my house, the little bit that's left. I have most of my furniture in storage um, and I'm leaving my house behind without a renter and everything. I'm just trusting God. My dad said he'll check up on my house every two weeks or so. But at the end of the day, I'm leaving my lands, my mothers, my brothers, my sisters, my fathers behind. My children on my account clients, you know, I'm leaving them behind for the kingdom of God. And that's what we have to do. And that's what we have to be willing to do as believers and Christians. Hey, what you doing here? Oh my gosh, look at that. I ain't gonna show you, but one of the one of the service members that he got some cats, he's there. That's so so hilarious. But anyway, um he's getting his cats micro trip. But you guys, I just wanted to share that. Be obedient and God will bless you. If you're worried about finances and lack, don't because God says you we have to trust him in the least of the worldly mammon for the greater blessing. So in other words, money, the worldly mammon and the value we place on it is the least of the things that we have to trust God for. It's the least, but yet we put so much value on it and we feel so much despair when we have lack thereof and we don't have as much as we want, but that's the least bit of the things that we need to entrust and have faith in God for the least of it out of everything in this world. That's the least of the things that we have to have faith for. And so you guys be blessed. I hope this video blesses you. And if you are on the ledge and if you are, you know, on the edge of trying, wondering if you should trust God and take that leap of faith, the woman of God that posted about her nail tech, um, I'm going to address you love. Um, you sent a comment and you, you said that, you know, God told you to stop being a nail tech. You've been through so many accidents. And so let me just say this in a loving way, perhaps some of those accidents have been caused by the um, by the undertone of um, the stiff neckness and disobedience, right? The stubbornness. God wants to bless you, and there is no better place to be than under the secret place and in the secret place of the Almighty. God wants to protect us. Um, the video that I posted about the real reasons why I have to move and stat. Everything else that I've been sharing has been true, but the real reasons that I shared is because I have an ex that's looking for me and is fixing to come back, but God has been abating him away for as long as I have been in obedient and in position and preparing to move. And so even though I have to uproot my life for safety purposes and reasons as one of the main 
issues that I'm dealing with, God wants to do the same for you. He wants to protect you from those car accidents. He wants to protect you from um, physical illnesses, sicknesses, um, bodily harm. Um, but you have to be in the secret place of the Almighty and you have to be moving in that direction and be willing to surrender whatever it is that he's asking you to surrender in order to get that greater protection. He wants to put a hedge of protection around you. He wants to cover you with his blood, but you have to be willing to receive it. And by receiving it, you will prove that you are ready to receive it and that you are doing, not only being a hearer of what he's saying, but a doer of his word by being obedient. So be obedient because surely obedience is better than sacrifice. And um, God's going to delight in you and you're going to be able to delight in him once you see what he has waiting for you on the other side so i hope this blesses you guys remember i love you with the love of jesus jesus loves you most though and remember jesus gave his blood so you can be saved now behave all right take care guys